I've had some suspicious necrotic spotting on some of my cattleyas in the greenhouse, and I finally decided to go ahead and test for virus. And I got a set of the Agdia test strips. This is a lawless Gloriana. It's got a serious case of ugly plant syndrome. You can look at the pseudobulbs and see the necrotic streaking. You can look at the leaves. You can see the necrotic spotting. It does express itself on both sides of the leaf. This is a particularly ugly leaf, even though some of the new growths appear to not be spotted. It may just be a matter of time before they become spotted. Our suspicion is that this plant is virused. Maybe it would be easier if I just turn the whole plant upside down and you can see the necrotic spotting on the pseudobulbs necrotic spotting that is expressed to a much less extent on the bottom, but you can see some evidence of it. That's the top of the leaf. That's the bottom of the leaf. So we're going to go ahead and test this and see if it's virused. First, you have to cut the top of the mesh bag, the Agdia mesh bag, so you can put your sample in it. Get yourself a stale razor blade, one new blade for each plant that you're going to test because you don't want to transfer, if it is virus, you don't want to transfer virus between plants. We're going to take a sample size about the size of a quarter to put in the bag. Spotting on the top of the leaf, spotting on the bait on the back of the leaf. We're going to drop it into this bag. We'll get to the bottom where most of the liquid is. Then you're going to mash it so you can get the plant juices out of the leaf. I'm using the back of a the side of a meat tenderizer. As the plant sap comes out, you see that greenish color, I guess that's the chlorophyll that's being dissolved in the buffer solution. You get your liquid in the bottom. And this is the actual test strip. You have to be very careful not to over immerse this test strip into that liquid sample. You want to immerse it just to the top of the white or the bottom of that green line. If you over immerse it, it will overload the sample and you won't get a true test. So it's very difficult. You can see right there that the liquid is just at that interface of the green and white lines. And it doesn't take very long. You'll start seeing a red effusion work its way up this strip. And as it works its way up, uh, if the first line that you might see would be a Cymbidium mosaic virus. The second line you might see would be the Odontoglossum ring spot virus. And then you need to see the, the top line, which is the control line. You can see the red working its way up now. You see that first line? That means this plant has a Cymbidium mosaic virus. Looks like we're going to get past the Odontoglossum ring spot virus. And you can see that top line, that's the control line that tells you that you do in fact have a valid test.
wipes the dust. This plant has an incredible flower. This is an interglossa a cl a cross, like a, back in the 90s in Houston. It has been a very poor grower over the last couple of years. And it's got those suspicious black necrotic spots, not sunken, expressed on both sides of the leaf. This tested positive for the Cymbidium mosaic virus as well as the odontoglossum ring spot virus. And it's too bad because it's got a first time it's bloomed in a couple of years. This is a Epicatlia Don Herman freckles. I was very concerned with the modeling on the leaf. It's sort of got this chlorotic yellow mosaic. That apparently was just heat damage to the chlorophyll. This tested negative for viruses. This Catlia has some odd black spotting on it, but it doesn't show on the bottom side of the leaf. So that spotting is only on one side. This tested negative for virus, so that black spotting must be just some sort of fungal spot rather than indicative of a virus. And this little Cordelia has a lot of it's grown in very bright lights. It's got a lot of the red pigmentation, but I couldn't tell if this, on this uh, back growth, if that was pigmentation or whether that was uh, necrotic spotting from a virus. It tested negative for uh, either virus. And I just have this one out here in case we want it. So that is Cymbidium virus? Yes. Cymbidium mosaic. Here comes that red working its way up the strip. Here's the line. It looks like Cymbidium mosaic virus. That bottom line is the Cymbidium mosaic virus. This line here is the control line. You have to have a control line show up so you know it's a valid test. And it ha had it had a Dontoglossum ring spot virus, there would have been a line showing up midway between those two points. As we wrap up this video, let's review how to use the test strips and what information the test strip strips provide us with. First, let's note the green end. The green end is the end that is immersed into the solution being tested. Also, notice the white stripe on that green bar. That is the point at which you do not immerse pass. Now, let's go to the top strip. Notice uh, as the fluid would work its way up the strip, the first bar that would appear would be the Cymbidium mosaic virus line. As we go to the second strip, the second bar that could appear would be the Odontoglossum ring spot virus line. And going to the third strip, we have uh, the control line appearing. Now this control line is very important. If you do not have a control line to appear, then you do not have a valid test and you'll have to retest. Next, let's go to an image showing the possible combinations that our test strips can show us. The first strip is showing the Cymbidium mosaic virus. Notice that's the first possible red line, and then going up having the control line. The second strip is showing the odontoglossum ring spot virus line, which is, you notice, in between what would be the Cymbidium mosaic virus line and the control line. The third strip is interesting. That is one that has both the Cymbidium mosaic virus and the odontoglossum ring spot virus line, and is the control line. And then the fourth strip is uh, showing one that we all want to see. It's the one that shows no virus and a strong control line. And remember, without the control line, you do not have a valid test. Uh, this concludes our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and come again. Bye.